You are now listening to our Inner Power Podcast program, The Heart of War, Impact and Healing, where we uncover the profound effects of conflict and the path to recovery. In this episode, we'll be delving into Fear, the Root of All Wars, discussing how fear manifests in both individual and collective consciousness. Personal stories from individuals directly affected by the war. Mindfulness practices to recognize and transform fear. High Harmony Seekers When we look at the vastness of our universe, with all its galaxies and stars, it's amazing to think that we are just small beings on a little planet. We live in a world where borders are constantly changing, and sometimes the beauty of life gets overshadowed by fear. But you know what's really amazing? Inside each of us, there's a whole universe just waiting to be explored. The universe is filled with so many emotions, hopes, dreams, and fears. How can we navigate this inner universe, especially when it reflects the chaotic world outside? Let's look into the world of fear and talk about its different forms, especially considering the heartbreaking events happening between Gaza and Israel. We're going to share some stories, ones that are filled with dreams, tangled in barbed wires and tears that don't recognize any borders. As we continue our conversation, I'll tell you about the ancient wisdom of mindfulness. It's like a guiding light that can help us navigate even the toughest times in our lives. We'll find solace, understanding, and maybe even a way to inner peace amidst all this chaos together. Fear is more than just an emotion. It's like this energy, this vibe that just flows through us. We can't always see it, but we can definitely feel it. When we talk about feeling fear, what we're actually experiencing is this energy, this change within ourselves. Fear can show up in so many different ways, both obvious and not so obvious. Have you ever noticed how fear can really take hold of our bodies? I'm feeling this tightness in my chest. My breathing feels shallow and my heart is racing. Our primal instincts are kicking in, getting us ready for the age-old fight or flight response. During the war between Gaza and Israel, it's really tough for people who have family members in the war zone. Every news alert or phone call must be so nerve-wracking for them, as it's a constant reminder of the immediate danger their loved ones could be in. But I have to admit, our minds are pretty amazing. They have this incredible ability to tell stories that can make our fears seem even scarier than they actually are. It's crazy how memories of past traumas worries about the future, or even just constantly hearing distressing news can really mess with our heads and make us think negatively all the time. Sometimes our minds have a way of imagining the worst possible outcomes, and it can really make us feel even more upset than the actual events themselves. Fear at this level can really feel all-consuming. It's all about the raw emotion, the deep sorrow, the constant worry for our loved ones and the empathy we feel for everyone who's suffering. We just feel so powerless and filled with despair. I got a story to tell you. Fatima, this amazing young woman from Gaza. She got a scholarship to study at a really fancy university in Australia. It was like a dream come true. A real kind of hope not just for her, but for her whole family. Her parents were really worried, but they managed to save up all their money to make sure she had everything she needed for this new chapter in her life. A few weeks has passed since she'd been to Australia. She started to get used to the streets and the tram lines. Yesterday, right when she was all excited about decorating her dorm room with family photos, she got hit with some bad news. Turns out, there's another round of conflict going on between Gaza and Israel. She can't even believe it. She felt her heart sink and fear grip her tightly. She saw these images in her mind. Jana, her younger sister, playing in our courtyard and her parents laughing and sipping tea. 
It was such a stark contrast to the harsh reality of war. She felt a wave of guilt wash over her. She couldn't help but wonder, Why am I here, all safe and cozy, while they're out there facing danger? That night, Fatima's roommate, Emily, who is also another overseas student, noticed that Fatima seemed upset in fear. Emily could see the fear in Fatima's eyes, and it reminded her of the pain she felt when she lost her own father in a bushfire years ago. She asked Fatima gently, What's been bothering you? In the soft glow of their room, these two women, who come from completely different backgrounds, sat together and talked about their loved ones, their fears, their losses, and the little glimmers of hope that kept them moving forwards. Fatima was telling Emily all about her family, her city, the beautiful sounds of early morning prayers, the delicious taste of her mother's olive bread, and how her sister's laughter always brightens her day. Emily was listening, and her heart was swelling with empathy. Fatima said, I can't help but feel this gnawing fear for my loved ones in conflict zones. It's like a constant worry that never goes away. And then there's this guilt that comes with, I am being safe here while they're in danger. I just wish I could be there with them to protect and comfort them. It's totally normal for us to feel afraid in situations like these. Our minds try to make sense of uncertainties and potential threats. But you know what? In times like these, we actually find out that we have this incredible inner strength. It's like there's this well of power deep inside us. And it's not just within us. It's all around us too. It's pretty amazing, don't you think? Fatima found comfort in opening up about her fears. Emily was more than just a listener. She was someone who could truly empathize and offer a shoulder to lean on, a moment of understanding. Human connection is truly powerful. During our toughest times, these connections and shared vulnerabilities become our hope. It's worth noting the guilt that Fatima felt. Many people in diasporas around the world feel the same way when their homelands are going through crises. It's totally normal to feel guilty, but it's important to pay attention to those feelings. Sometimes we just can't control where we end up or what situations we find ourselves in. What we have control over is the compassion we can show, the awareness we can raise, and the positive impact we can make no matter where we are. I've got another story for you. Mohammed is a Palestinian father living in the heart of Gaza. Mohammed has sun-kissed wrinkles and eyes that hold the weight of many unspoken fears. The narrow streets of Gaza are filled with stories from countless generations. Mohammed would hold his young son close every day at dawn when the muezzin called for prayer. He would cherish those precious moments of peace, breathing in the scent of his son's hair. Mohammed would often find himself captivated by the rising sun, as if it were offering a glimmer of hope a chance for a worry-free day ahead. Mohammed's biggest fear was always the looming threat of war. It's really scary to think about not being able to keep his family safe from the unexpected violence that could happen at any moment. He had seen so much, lost too many friends, and those scars on the walls of his home, they're always there, like a haunting reminder. One day, the worst thing ever happened to him. Their neighborhood got hit by an airstrike. Muhammad's world was turned upside down when the ground shook. Walls crumbled and everything fell apart. After everything calmed down, Muhammad was left in a state of shock and confusion. He couldn't believe what he saw. His son's body full of blood. He quickly runs towards his son in pain. He holds his son up. His son lifeless body is now in his arms. It felt like time just stopped. He was gripped by a pain that went deeper than just physical wounds. In that one heart-shattering moment, all the fears he had kept at bay and all the nightmares he had suppressed suddenly came alive. When Muhammad finally spoke, his voice was just a whisper. He said, 
I just wanted him to live, to play, to grow up with tears streaming down his face. Muhammad's story is really sad and shows the biggest fears that many parents have. Not just in Gaza, but in other places where there is conflict too. Every mom and dad out there know the feeling of fear that comes with the thought of something bad happening to their loved ones. It's something we all share. In these stories, fear isn't just some vague feeling. You can feel it. It happens all the time. And it's closely connected to love. Every time we hug, kiss, or have a meal together, it feels like we're not just expressing our love, but also standing up against this overwhelming fear. But you know what's really amazing? Even in the midst of all this tragedy, the human spirit is so incredibly resilient. It's truly amazing to see parents like Muhammad who, even in the face of unimaginable loss and devastation, manage to find the strength to keep going. They hold on to hope and continue to dream of a brighter future for their loved ones. It's important to remember that every headline and statistic represents real people with genuine fears, families, and dreams. As we think about Muhammad's story, let's take a moment to keep all parents and families like his in our hearts. Let's allow their stories to touch our hearts, motivate us, and serve as a reminder of the common humanity that connects us all. Fear is kind of like a shadow. It tends to grow when we don't know much about something. In order to dissipate it, we just need to bring awareness to it. And this light is what we call mindfulness. Mindfulness is all about being fully present and living in the present moment. Why is this so important when we're dealing with fear? Fear tends to pull us away from the present. It's just how it works. It's like we get caught up in thinking about past regrets or worrying about what might happen in the future. When we focus on the present moment, we regain control over our lives and stop letting fear hold us back. Our breath can really help us on being mindfulness. Whenever you feel scared, just remember to focus on your breath. It can really help calm you down. As you take a deep breath in, feel the refreshing air filling up your lungs giving you a sense of life and vitality. Just breathe out and let go of all the tension, worries, and anxieties. Doing this simple act can really ground us in the present moment and make us appreciate the amazing gift of being alive. Instead of trying to push fear away or getting caught up in its stories, just try observing it. Just pay attention to how it feels in your body and the thoughts that come up in your mind. Just by watching without judging, we make room for fear, and in that space, we find freedom. Why not try connecting with the earth? Do you know that there's something really special about walking barefoot on the grass? Or just feeling the ground beneath your feet? It's like these simple acts remind us of how connected we are to nature and everything around us. It's almost like they keep us grounded and present in the moment. When you are feeling fear, you could also try compassionate dialogue. It is all about having a caring and understanding conversation. Just talk to your fear like you would to a frightened child. You want to understand the roots and triggers of it. When we approach it with love and compassion, we can change its energy. How about we do a quick mindfulness exercise together? Why don't you go ahead and close your eyes if you're feeling comfortable? Just take a nice deep breath in. Feel that air filling up your lungs. And as you breathe out, just let go of any tension you might be holding on to. Just picture your fears as leaves gently floating on a stream. Just watch them without any judgment and let them drift away. Just wanted to let you know that right now. You're safe, you're loved, and you're definitely not alone. When we're exploring mindfulness and fear, it's really important to also acknowledge the importance of deep listening. It's really amazing how truly listening to someone can have such a profound impact on both the listener and the person being heard. It's not just about using our ears, but really engaging with our whole being. This is not just helping us, but also helping our loved ones who is feeling fear. 
Deep listening is not just something you do, but it's actually an art. It's all about being there for someone, helping them to overcome their fear, creating a safe space where they can open up and share their true thoughts, fears, and dreams without worrying about being judged or interrupted. As humans, we all have a deep desire to be understood and validated. When we really listen, we're giving something special to the other person. We're showing them that we see and understand them and that we value their thoughts and experiences. This can be really healing, especially for people who feel left out, ignored, or confused in the middle of all the conflict and chaos. When it comes to the conflict between Gaza and Israel, or any conflict for that matter, deep listening can really help bring people together. It's like a way to make the other more relatable. It's about realizing that beyond all the labels like nationality, religion, or ethnicity, we all have a common human experience. Deep down, we all want the same things. Peace, love, and understanding. When someone truly listens, it has a ripple effect. When someone feels heard, validated, and understood, they are more likely to offer the same gift to someone else. Deep listening has the power to gradually break down walls of mistrust and misunderstanding. I have been practicing deep listening, and I could see the benefits it gives. I am encouraging you to practice deep listening in your lives. It's always a good idea to begin with the people you care about the most, like our loved ones. Once you've got that covered, you can move on to your acquaintances. This simple act has the power to bring about transformation and healing. Not only for individual wounds, but also for the collective wounds of humanity. Breathing is also something truly amazing that we tend to forget about. It's like this ongoing thread that runs through our lives, keeping us connected in every single moment. In the midst of all the chaos, noise, conflict, and fears, our breath is like a sanctuary. It's a safe place where we can find refuge and clarity. Breathing is something we do without thinking, but we can also choose to be aware of it. It's like the connection that links our body and mind together, as well as our inner world with the outside world. When we focus on our breath, we connect with the present moment right here and now. It helps us see things clearly without getting caught up in illusions or distractions that can confuse us. When we feel scared, anxious, or stressed, our breathing tends to become shallow and erratic. Not only does this deprive our body of essential oxygen, but it also sends signals of distress, which just makes our emotional turmoil even worse. Something as simple as conscious breathing can really make a difference. Taking deep, rhythmic breaths with intention can actually help reverse this cycle. It's amazing how it can soothe our nervous system, bring clarity to our mind, and center our heart. In the midst of the distressing situation in Gaza and Israel, we can find solace and connection through the simple act of breathing. It can serve as a way to show solidarity and offer prayers for those affected. Every time we take a deep breath, we can send out wishes of peace, healing, and understanding. It's not just for ourselves, but for every soul caught in the web of conflict. When we consciously breathe, it doesn't just affect us, but it also has an impact on our surroundings. When we're calm and centered, it's like we're spreading peace and stability to everyone around us. As you breathe in, you can feel the sense of solidarity and connection with all the other people who are also listening and breathing along with you. As you breathe out, just let go of your wishes, prayers, and hopes for peace, understanding, and healing. Our breath is truly special. It's not just something we take for granted, but a valuable tool and a safe haven for us. When you're feeling scared or unsure, just go back to it. Let it guide you, heal you, and connect you to the boundless ocean of collective humanity. It's like every breath is a whisper of hope, love, and unity. The most important thing is to find peace within ourselves. 
The world outside is always changing, and sometimes it's out of our hands. But we can focus on nurturing our inner sanctuary. By practicing things like mindfulness, deep listening, and conscious breathing, we can discover solace, clarity, and a deep sense of peace no matter what's going on around us. Conflicts usually happen because people don't understand each other and have strong biases. Make sure to take some time to educate yourself about the histories, narratives, and perspectives of both sides. It's really important to have a good understanding of both perspectives. Let's have conversations, not arguments. When you have conversations, try to focus on understanding the other person's perspective instead of trying to convince them of your own. When we really try to understand the other, we often realize that they're not all that different from us. Finding peace is a marathon, not a sprint. You might experience moments of despair or doubt. But as we take each step, being mindful, compassionate, and understanding, we get closer to where we want to be. Even when things seem really tough, there's always a little bit of hope, a spark of the human spirit that just won't give up. Just hold on to that feeling. Nurture it and let it guide you towards finding peace, both within yourself and in the world around you. First and foremost, we must keep in mind that everything is transient. This will also pass. Even the most powerful storms in life eventually give way to peace. We share a common thread of humanity, despite our varied backgrounds, ideologies, and life experiences. Our shared experiences, hardships, aspirations, and anxieties bind us together. We may frequently feel helpless in the face of enormous obstacles, such as the conflict between Gaza and Israel. But keep in mind that every one of us possesses tremendous power, which comes from our intentions, deeds, words, and compassion. Change is something we can bring about both within ourselves and in the wider environment. The practices and ideas we have discussed today are not just for this moment, but for a lifetime. I encourage you all to incorporate these into your daily lives. Let they serve as your compass in foggy nights and your anchors in rough seas.